Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> now, apparently Andy Ruiz, in preparing for the rematch against Anthony Joshua, has been losing weight, right? Trying to improve his quickness. Apparently, people like Derek Chisora and David Hay are going around privately telling people that Anthony Joshua <clears throat> is in great shape for the rematch. That Joshua physically is ready. So let's put a spin on this. I just want people to understand. I recognize Joshua's popularity. Even today, Joshua might still be the cash cow of the heavyweight division. Right? I understand the pedigree is hard to argue with. Olympic gold medalist. Heavyweight champion. He even unified parts of the title. Right? I'll agree with all that. And I know, when I'm here online being critical of Anthony Joshua, I get a lot of blowback. Just like when I'm critical of, let's say, Canelo or Vasyl Lomachenko, very popular boxers. I understand. Now, I'm not here, let's frame this the right way. I'm not here saying I'm right. Far from it. <clears throat> right? What I'm here saying is simply, this is my point of view. I want you, the boxing hardcore, to come up with your own point of view. I'm just telling you how I'm playing the fight. I'm just telling you what I see, and I'll concede I have strong opinions on some things like this fight. So, let me just say this. <clears throat> In my opinion, boxing is like a language. When you say someone is bilingual and they're fluent in French, let's say French is their second or third or fourth language, and they're fluent in French, you understand that that took years to get to. That it's extremely unlikely that the person became fluent in French in the last, oh, 12 weeks, let's say the length of a training camp, right, just doesn't happen. So if you hear someone and they sound like a Parisian, your assumption should be that this person has been pursuing this skill, this language, for a while. So, let me just say, <clears throat> Anthony Joshua can be in the best shape of his life. And I mean this. For me, it, it wouldn't make a difference. Simply because if his game plan, as I suspect, is to fight on his back foot, he's not fluent in it. Right? We just saw a fight. We just saw the Kovalev-Canelo fight, where Kovalev's on his back foot. Right? He looked different than the normal Kovalev. He's on his back foot. He's relying on a jab. He was effective. In my opinion, he's winning the early rounds. Right? But you understood the fight was 12 rounds. And whereas someone who has worked on a back foot game for years understands that they need to be effective for all 12 rounds, Kovalev, by his own admission, a guy who's normally a flat-footed slugger, was tired and winded after six rounds. Right? Even in the fight of his life, he wasn't able to go the distance. He started fading. 
right? Understand, a back foot is premised on the idea that to offset the other guy's offense, the other guy's aggression, you're going to be able to operate using movement for the duration of the fight. Right? The first six rounds don't matter if you can't handle the last six rounds. If you're going to collapse in the seventh round or the eighth round or the ninth round, you still lose the fight. Now Kovalev made it to something like the eleventh round. But he knew he was on fumes. Right? He, while he was able to work with his new trainer, Buddy McGirt, relatively new, and while that training camp clearly gave him some back foot skills, right? It didn't give him enough skills to use that back foot from start to finish to beat Saul Alvarez. Now let me just say, a few years ago, Floyd Mayweather met up with Anthony Joshua. He wanted Anthony Joshua to train with him at the Mayweather gym. He felt Joshua could tighten up some things. Right? I'm just telling you, I believe, reports claim, that Mayweather was concerned about Joshua's defense. Right? This is after Joshua had won the Olympic gold medal. This is after Joshua had had success as a pro. Right? Mayweather saw this young champion fighting. And Mayweather saw holes in his game. Right? This is mid-course. Now I'm just telling you, let's be diplomatic. I know heavyweights age more slowly than everyone else. I'll agree with that. I believe Luis Ortiz at late 30s has a shot on Deontay Wilder. Right? I do agree that heavyweights age more slowly than everyone else. But even when Mayweather got to Joshua, in my opinion, it was too late. Just like it would be too late right now to teach Andy Ruiz a back foot game. Right? Either when you come up, you value defense with your offense. You value a back foot with your front foot. You figure out the coordination for both. Right? Either you're that kind of student. Right? We'll call it a Willie Mays, Mike Trout, Mickey Mantle type of guy. Right? Either you're the pitcher who with the 97 mile an hour fastball feels a need. Feels a need to work on a changeup. To work on a curveball and to work on location. Either you're that guy or you're not. Now, the bottom line is this. For all the instruction, and I don't even need to know about all the instruction, Anthony Joshua received in his life. Right? For all he's learned in his life, <clears throat> What I know looking on film is that Anthony Joshua is not advanced on his back foot. He's never going to be confused with Tyson Fury on his back foot. Nor is he defensively blessed. Right? He's one of the best punchers I've seen. He's accurate. As I've said, looking at the film of the first fight, the left hand that he drops Ruiz with is beautiful. When Ruiz gets off the canvas, Joshua's ready. He lands a right hand. Joshua hits hard with both hands. He's accurate with both hands. 
But as Charles Dickens said, this is the best of times and the worst of times. Those offensive gifts, his power and his accuracy, hurt his development of other tools. Right? Compare it to LeBron James. All I could say is LeBron James as a young man was bigger than his teammates, was athletic, had great offensive skills. For some reason, there's some part of LeBron that had him learning how to pass. Who was he passing to? He wasn't passing to someone on his high school team who was as good as him. But yet, that's how LeBron thought. Passing's a big part of the game. LeBron James need to needed to have it be part of his resume. Right? Back to the basket big man skills. Here's a guy with guard skills. Back to the basket big man skills. LeBron James knew that as a high schooler. He had them when he entered the league. Right? The guys who cross the T's and dot the I's Right, those guys have spent years becoming fluent in those skills. Right, Russell Wilson runs around in the pocket as well as anybody. But yet Russell Wilson can read defenses. You can tell Russell Wilson has spent a long time learning how to read defenses. You have running quarterbacks who can't who are effective, but who haven't developed those skills. Russell Wilson has. Now I view Anthony Joshua as I do relief pitchers. Right? Great fastball. There's a reason why they're not starters. Right? Aralis Chapman can be in the best shape of his life. He's not a starting pitcher. Right? Anthony Joshua knows he has flaws. That's why when he had the lineal Tyson Fury begging him for a shot when Tyson Fury was coming back from rehab. Talk about a time to fight a guy. He's rusty. He's out of shape. He's coming back from rehab. Joshua didn't fight him. Right, the whole Deontay Wilder thing, absolutely ridiculous. At a certain point, a guy who's interested in legacy is going to say, okay, great, I can get $20 million off this fight, $30 million off this fight, the other guy wants to get paid what I'm getting paid, let's do it. I want to unify. This guy has a share of the title. If I win this fight, it's big legacy. If I look decent in the fight, that raises my profile. Right? So, let me just say this too. Joshua trained with Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Vladimir Klitschko was one of these cagey guys who understood who are the young lions in the forest? <laughs> well, I'm champ, and I get to pick my sparring partners. Let me pick my future competition, the next wave, to spar with. So, of course, Klitschko could get ready for his next fight, but also Klitschko could see what Joshua, who he sparred with, what Deontay Wilder, who he sparred with, brought to the table. So understand, when Joshua fights Klitschko, Klitschko who's cautious, who I believe Joshua modeled himself off of, same temperament, right? Klitschko's cautious. Klitschko, Klitschko is methodical, right? Vladimir Klitschko thought that the way to victory against Anthony Joshua was to force Joshua on his back foot. Folks, look at the film of the first few rounds of that fight. 
Vladimir Klitschko, who had sparred with Joshua. One at Joshua on his back foot. Now let's be clear on Andy Ruiz. I was watching The Zone the other day and I saw a little clip. I guess Sylvester Stallone is making a film on the real life Rocky, which is what Sergio Moro calls Andy Ruiz, the real life Rocky, right? And Stallone's basically comparing him in the ad to Rocky Balboa, his fictional character that won Best Picture, I think, in 76 or some year like that. Let's be clear here. Andy Ruiz is not Rocky. Right? Rocky was some local guy who was earning money as a mob enforcer who had never hit the big time who had never been on the big stage the champ Apollo Creed wanted to drum up a local crowd so he picks an untested local fighter Rocky doesn't have the money for world-class facilities so his friend Paulie and him come up with a plan where Rocky is training in part in meat lockers and he's hitting carcasses of meat right it's riveting stuff in the movie at one point Apollo Creed's chief of staff sees Rocky on TV hitting meat carcasses as part of the local newscast. And he's trying to tell his fighter, hey, this Italian stallion guy you're going to fight is serious about this. You need to be ready. And Creed doesn't take it seriously. Now contrast that with former Olympian Andy Ruiz. Understand, before Ruiz steps in the ring, with Anthony Joshua. A sanctioning body had already installed Ruiz as a mandatory challenger for the belt. And Ruiz actually fought for the heavyweight title. This is before Joshua. Ruiz isn't a local guy. He fought for the world title. Traveled to New Zealand goes the distance against Joseph Parker, a guy with a better back foot game than Joshua. Let's be clear. A guy who went the distance with Joshua. Right? A guy who, in my opinion, was unfortunate in that the referee for that Joshua fight was terrible. Wouldn't allow him to fight inside. Well, understand, against Joseph Parker, in Parker's backyard, Ruiz loses a debatable close decision. That's the Andy Ruiz who existed before he fights Joshua. Also think about it. If I ask you to name me the biggest trainers in the sport, the trainers young fighters would be lucky to have. Right? You might name Freddie Roach. You might name, well, I'm forgetting the guy's name right now on the fly here, but you might name Golovkin's former trainer, Abel Sanchez. Well, let me just say this. Andy Ruiz has worked with both. He's not a guy hitting meat carcasses in a meat locker. He's not Rocky. Now, I know that mythology is going to help sell tickets. But no, this guy was enough of a world-class fighter. By the way, unbeaten. Until that Joseph Parker fight. Unbeaten. This guy was a world-class unbeaten fighter enough so that when he walks into the wild card gym, when he approaches Abel Sanchez at Big Bear, both of these world-class trainers spent some time with him. Let me just say this too. Years, and I'm not kidding, years before Andy Ruiz, you can look it up, 
fights Joseph Parker, I was here online telling you. Whatever you think of Andy Ruiz, he has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. Those videos are still up. Now all I'm saying is this, Andy Ruiz is fluent. He is fluent in hand speed and combinations. This guy's completely fluent, folks. That's his game. Right? He's fluent. Now all I could say is, how is, and I know he's the overwhelming favorite, how is Anthony Joshua going to deal with that hand speed and those combinations? I can tell you, it's not going to be on his back foot. Anthony Joshua only has a puncher's chance in this fight. Let's be real too. If Anthony Joshua tries to win the fight on his back foot, you have a different dynamic happening this time. He's no longer the champ. We're going to expect more from the challenger. And he's already been, in his opinion, ripped off in a heavyweight title fight. Right? We're going to look at this fight carefully. If Joshua tries to win this fight, and I don't think he can, by the way, but if Joshua tries to win this fight behind a jab and a back foot and movement, and if he doesn't engage... Andy enough right I believe we're going to award Ruiz with the decision that's if Joshua finds a way to survive for 12 rounds I want you to go back to the fight Andy has weeks before he fights Anthony Joshua he's in against Alexander Demetrenko now, Demetrenko's a guy who's been around, KG vet. Folks, Andy is so on his game. His timing is so crisp. He's throwing combinations with such force that Alexander Demetrenko, a vet, right, a KG vet, quits right Andy overwhelms you with volume and power there's some knockdowns in the first fight where you don't even know the punch that hit Anthony Joshua right it looks like he and Andy are together Andy stole a combination then you see Joshua just fall down Joshua doesn't know the punch that hit him you see Joshua at one point ask his corner what hit me right he doesn't know folks if you go back to the Andy Ruiz Joe Hanks fight same thing right Andy throws a combination understand Andy is tucking power shots in the middle of the combination and Joe Hanks goes down you don't even know which shot hits Joe Hanks. That ends Joe Hanks's unbeaten streak. So Andy is fluent. Completely fluent in hand speed and combination punching. I was disappointed when I watched the zone because Andy, in terms of his offense, his ability to throw power shots, combinations, is a lot like Ray Leonard. And because Andy was a late replacement, Right? Many of the people were unprepared, including Ray Leonard, who was a commentator on the zone. Ray was absolutely astonished at the end of the fight. Ray basically said, hey, you know, this shows you that you can't judge a book by its cover. Seemed like Ray barely knew who Andy Ruiz was. Had Ray known who Andy Ruiz was, he would realize that in that first fight, Andy Ruiz was Andy Ruiz. The only thing out of character was Andy hitting the canvas. Let me just say this too. When he gets off the canvas, Joshua throws the right hand and lands flush on Andy. Andy takes the punch. Andy has a great chance. 
right? By the way, that's how close Joshua comes to winning. Andy could have gone down. It would have been the second time. Andy takes the punch. But more importantly, the difference between the two men is what happens next. Andy takes the punch and stays in the pocket. Andy then starts throwing hard punches back because that's Andy's game. He doesn't want to back away. Even from a gifted puncher like Anthony Joshua, Ruiz knows he doesn't have the back foot game. So Ruiz then starts throwing a combination. This is after he's gotten off the canvas and then gotten hit with another bomb. Joshua doesn't have the defense. Doesn't come close to blocking the shots. Joshua doesn't have the defense to even protect his head in moments like that. Right? So, I understand. Derek Chisora sparred with Joshua, who apparently is in great shape. Derek Chisora is not Andy Ruiz. Doesn't have Andy's hand speed. Isn't the combination puncher Andy Ruiz is. Former unified cruiserweight titleist, former heavyweight champion, David Hay talks with his former opponent, Derek Chisora, hears that AJ's in great shape. Hey, good for him. He's still not fluent in operating off his back foot, right? He's, he's not fluent defensively. The best interview I've seen on this fight is one with Tyson Fury. Where Tyson Fury says, look, you know, maybe Joshua will be able to survive on his back foot for a few rounds. But he needs to understand that if you're going to fight on your back foot, you have to be prepared to do so the entire fight. That it's not a few rounds type thing. Right, so Joshua's best hope, quite frankly, is to try to collapse the pocket, is to try to get back to the series of shots where he gets Andy down off the left hand. Then when Andy gets up, this time place the right hand a little bit better. Right, Joshua's best shot of winning this fight is not his back foot. It's to try to have a shootout with Andy Ruiz. It's a puncher's chance. I know this is not what the odds are reflecting. They have Joshua better than two to one favorite. Whatever. Right? Just understand though. If a boxing match breaks out here. If Joshua even thinks about trying to dance. That big clunky guy. I used to call him clunky heavyweight here online. If he tries to model himself after an Ali. It's going to fall apart. To get to where Ali was at a young age, you would have to focus on movement and timing and stuff like that. Right combination punching. Right, Josh was now in his late 20s, folks. That time has passed. Right, to be Willie Mays, power, speed, fielding. At a young age, you had to focus on power, speed, fielding. Right? They once asked Willie Mays what he thought about 40-40. He said, man, Willie led the league, by the way, several times in stolen bases. Willie said, man, if, if I would have known that people would have made a big deal about it, I would have gone out and done it. Right? That's the mindset. That's not AJ's mindset. AJ's a gifted puncher. He's accurate. He's developing a jab. You think in a training camp, uh, training camp, <laughs> you think in 12 weeks, <laughs> he's going to marry that jab to movement and be up on his toes, dancing around the ring? Good luck with that. Right? Trainers can only do so much. By the way, he's with the same trainer. If they didn't think Movement and defense was the top priority before. You think now the same group is going to have him ready to move around the ring, outmaneuver, and outbox 
Andy Ruiz, let's be clear too. He can look at the film of the Joseph Parker tape. Parker's a different fighter than Andy Ruiz. Parker actually has a back foot. Parker uses leans to get away from punches. I know it didn't work out for Parker against Derek Chisora. Okay, fine. But understand, Parker is wired differently than AJ. AJ is a slugger. Right? AJ is a puncher. AJ is not a back foot artist. He's not ambidextrous like Tyson Fury. He hasn't developed his legs like Tyson Fury. You can't expect him to show that level of game in the rematch. I expect Andy Ruiz to successfully defend his heavyweight title. I'm shocked at the line, but it's okay. I'm not complaining. I'm just betting. And I'm on the Andy Ruiz side of the ledger. Right? I have hedged the play with Joshua by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.